Here we go then. Hold on to your seats. It's going to be a bumpy ride for both sets of fans as Evil Geniuses go up against CDEC in the grand final. And we've already seen Leshrac picked in the draft. This is playing out exactly as Mad predicted here as well. Naga being removed, Teki being removed. I think those are two years they want to remove the most. And then, of course, they did have uh, first pick on CDC. Oh. What a fast draft. So <laughs> the speed of this draft one. is extraordinary. Those two captains already. And I mean, the Naga ban makes a lot of sense because even though Skidek did win versus Naga yesterday, it caused us a lot of, it caused them, sorry, a lot of troubles. And sure, they played it really well with the snowball, the visage bird, but that was a. I'd say a lucky fight in, in, in the sense that Naga was actually dominating the game at that stage. And also, the, you could see the Connor initiation yesterday was a big issue for them. I mean, this only happened because CDC are um, first pick, so they are able to actually ban Naga, exactly. ban Takis and pick Lesha. And it felt like, oh, this is the best of fights, so PPD was like, he wasn't sure if they would pick Lesha or not, maybe he was at least, but they, they haven't played Lesha so much before. So it was a, it was a fine gamble for him to actually give, try to give them Lesha and see what happens. And he probably did not ban Lesha, he banned Daxir just to see how would they react to that. C-Dex turn. And they responded with the jar, the clockwork as well. We we talk about it. It could be very deadly against the Lash right? if you have an early blade mill and Lash. You don't want to be forced into getting an early BKB. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm looking towards Storm and thinking, are CDC gonna ban it out now or are they gonna let EG have it? Because Storm and Clockwork combination we've seen over and over again. And with Gyrocopter as your hard carry, you have a nice mix of magical and physical damage. Yeah, I think it was a really good gamble giving them less track. Some people might think it's dumb, but it's like, you know, if they pick Gyro and you get less clock, that's a huge draft win, and you have advantage whether or not your first or second pick as EG. Exactly. So you kind of force them into the less rack, and you know, many other teams have not played it in a long time as well because of how much it's been banned. Sure, it's a strong hero, but it's not a combination straight off. I, you guys talk about the storm, but I actually prefer what C C D C did here. They actually took out the ember instead of the storm. Like we talk about the PR ember is much better at dealing with PR compared to having just a gyro alone. I mean, Eiji was definitely ready for that left-right pick by the looks of it. I mean, Gyro is a good hero versus Teshrak in the sense that you get a BKB quite early on Gyro and then Leshrak is not relevant, at least early on in the game. If you're Eiji though, you're wondering why they didn't be an anti-mage. Indeed. Indeed, because anti-mage looks like... I mean, there, there's the... Obviously, we've seen that before, so I'm gonna say the Gyro might be carried, that's probably why. But we've seen IG do it, right? They just pick Gyro into anti-mage and then it was a Gyro mid suddenly. I don't know if Sumail... The thing is, I don't feel like Sumail adapts how Ferrari could adapt. I don't. I, 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 I wouldn't like to see this made on the Gyro mid, for example. I honestly think the Gyro mid was terrible, though. It didn't work out well for them. It just kind of sat there. He didn't have a massive impact that game at all. No, for sure, but um, anti mage is really the pick you need to win the game, and then you just itemize uh, on Gyro like we, we've seen just what you need, E-Blade or whatever. I think they can't approach like that in this game. Shiki and Zumail are way too high impact players, and Leshrac here is super important to just keep stalling time, buy time for Phantom Lancer, and that's pretty much his job here. So. But that's not how CDEC plays, though. They just yeah. pressure a lot with Lashrak and Phantom Lancer. It's very rarely four makes space for one. Oh no, the time comes from the active fighting. You need to have strong fighters so that you can go into it. It's true that the way, the way CDEC plays, giving them Lashrak when you think about it, it's actually very scary because it's one of the best heroes. Crystal Maiden. C-Dex, turn to pick. It's a bit free. Did you to give them their strike? They probably have a plan, but I feel like this is the first game of the best of five, and with the side first pick advantage, it's definitely on CDC. EG took Dyer, but I feel like first pick is going to be key in, that, in those finals. Crystal made him pretty good here over Phantom Lancer. I would actually say one of the best supports with her ultimate, and Phantom Lancer no way interrupted. But at the same time, you press a left strike. You're lucky if you all die in a couple of seconds. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anyway, when you look at left strike Phantom Lancer, like I don't think any hero, you know. Fits or is good versus both of them because they're very, like they have a lot of magical damage with left strike, a lot of physical defense answers. So you're always gonna have heroes that will struggle. Still, it's it's pretty good. It's like what we saw versus Vici when they had this, or sorry, versus uh, MVP when Vici uh, wanted to deal with the Slark, the Clockwork CM combo. It's amazing. We haven't seen it yet. And it, I mean, in the main event, uh, the, on the main stage, this is the first time we've seen it. Yeah, EG have banned it plenty of times against other teams, but this time they do get to pick it up themselves. I like the picks from EG so far against the Phantom Lancer, because that's an early reveal of Phantom Lancer. Going into a hero that can gank really well in Storm Spirit, a hero that has good AoE damage, which is ever so crucial in Crystal Maiden. 
If you can Glimmer Cape her and just get Dolty off, that could be you. I mean, look at CDAX lineup as well. They don't really have very good lockdown. Let's Rock Stun is not reliable. There's, there's only Winter's Curse right now, and Storm is going to be a hero that thrives in those type of environments where the opponent can't lock you down. The only thing though is that Let's Rock is very strong for Storm. I feel like it's a very good matchup for the Let's Rock yeah. because it's really hard for Storm to just go in and drop Remnant to get in order to get some creeps. You can easily get killed by the Let's Rock. I mean, to counteract that, they have the CM and she's going to be. Uh, I assume PPD will take up that, mm. that hero and he is going to be in charge of actually trying to get an early game to actually help and upset the balance of the Storm versus Lash Rock lane. That, that could do a lot because if the Storm does get ahead then he can just solo kill the Lash Rock over and over again. Yeah, ganks towards Storm's lane could be really useful but I also think that it's important to get a good game on Clockwork in this game. If he gets a blade mail early, he can do wonders against the Lash. So I wonder if they want to focus a lot on ganking for the Storm or if they're going to try and win the other lanes and leave Sumail to his own device because he has made some insane comebacks before. And the thing, we're assuming that it's a, it's a Lash Rock mid, okay, which now it probably is, but still, we could be looking at something else than Lash Rock mid, and we don't really know how CDEC plays a Lash Rock. True. They haven't shown it really yet. I mean, at the same time, the only time that we've seen Lash Rock really move to support is when they've drafted multiple counters, Anti-Major Pugna, I think in particular, sometimes in Nexus Assassin, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think there's no reason why they shouldn't run it mid. I would definitely agree. Yeah. That, there is no natural corner in Leshrak in this game. We, we said the Clockwork could be one if he gets, a, if he gets an early blade mid, but besides that... <laughs> I like how we saw Aoi there and his top heroes is Techie now as well, available there with 3-0. One of his best performances. Five seconds I mean, with the Spirit Breaker there, I think Leshrak is more or less likely to be just the mid hero here. Reserve time. Oh yeah, more, more than definitely. So, CDC, what are you looking to remove now from EG? I think the Undying... Oh, from EG. The Undying ban from EG was quite smart. As we said, Spirit Baker and Dying, very classic CDC duo on the offlane. Remove from EG, they're probably looking for the AOI hero, AOI. We're not sure which one he wants to play yet. Can they play Enigma? Is that an option for them? Smart choice on the Visage, actually. That could have been a very good fighting hero. Visage is one of the best skirmish heroes in the game, so removing him is quite wise, especially with the Crystal Maiden mana aura as well. I honestly think Enigma could be an option for EG. An early mech to fight versus DC because EG, ha they have a lot of fighting heroes right now. I mean, those, all those heroes can fight very early on and re respond to aggression. It sort of works, but there's two different skills that can cancel your BKB ulti even, so it, that's the only reason I feel it's kind of tough. But be, I mean, Enigma can do a lot of work besides his black hole. Yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah, it's more about the mech and the early fighting. A black hole would be reliable. Uh, I mean, later on in the game, but they can't really count on it. I'm just thinking because we haven't seen CDC really go offensive, er, aggressive. Well, he needs a good start in order to play how he plays. He needs to be able to farm his drums or whatever. He needs to be active. If he gets under leveled, under farm early on, he's probably not going to be a factor. Oh, really? A Skyrath last pick. I, I worry for that Skyrath against the Spirit Breaker and PL running him down, but this is very curious. Good with Clockwork, you have the Hook, the Cog, and then Skyrath ulti combo. Good versus the Cold Embrace. Yeah. Very aggressive draft. You can move and you just take the full ball from Mystic Flare. Very aggressive draft from Eugene. It's only uh, part of uh, two wins of eight picks so far in TI5 as well. Not the most successful. Ten seconds. Yeah, but it does hard counter the Winter Wyvern, that is true. He cannot save anyone really with that mist uh, with the cold and It doesn't scale that well though. I've seen it in theory. It's like, okay, well, yeah, you can just Mystic Flare him. But the cold and just heals you percentage based. So like 20, 30 minutes or when you get BKBs, he's useless. Skyrath is. Also, the reality might be that Skyrath just gets face rushed by Spirit Breaker and PL. Like we have seen how CDEC play. So they have to do really good counter initiations. Yeah, your universe is going to have a tough job with that card in order to make sure his supports can position themselves and survive the first initiation from CDC. His role is super important in this game, yes. So we're looking for what? Last support? Maybe what? Rubik, Disruptor, something? Most like Doctor? Five seconds. Yeah, I think any support would. Wow, there we go. All right. Wow. That's not a support. So it's probably a Spirit Maker <laughs> support and an offering, Queen of Pain. Okay, thank you very much. Gentlemen, we'll be back after the match for their analysis on Game 1. But for now, it's down to the main arena with your commentary team for the Grand Finals. Cinder and Toby won! Let's get it underway! The International Five Grand Final! It will be Evil Geniuses going up against CDEC Gaming. I am Toby One, joined by Cinder, and we'll be holding your hand through the next couple of hours when we will find out who will take immortality. The biggest title in Dota 2 calendars is right here, is the International. Yeah, and what a game to get us started on. I am. Um...
so excited for these drafts. I mean, there's there's so many things to talk about for this game that are that are new in the tournament that we haven't seen uh, up until the grand final. We've got for the first time we have CDC actually playing the Shrek. I do believe. I don't think they've played it ever before. And would you believe it? They're actually once again trying to trick EG, similar to yesterday in the winner bracket final when they picked a bounty hunter early in the draft and switched it to the off lane. It's a support lesh being played by Garter. And the moment you saw the Queen of Pain pick, you were like, okay, this has to be a support spirit breaker together with the AA. But guess what? It's actually not. It's an off lane spirit breaker for XC. They probably feel like a Corlish rack here might be countered a little. This to really, really play Skyrath anymore, but uh, as the panelists pointed out, good synergy with Clock, good against the Winter Wyvern's Cold Embrace, but of course, a very glass cannony support you can easily get turned on by, by CDC's heroes. So, what a game this is going to be! Yeah, man, I was actually worried what when I first saw the Skyrath Mage coming up, as uh, in wonderful style, we will have a moment to contemplate our thoughts, but. To pick up something like a Skyrath Mage, and then you can have a Spirit Breaker charging around. Skyrath Mage isn't really the greatest. The panel we're talking about, like maybe, uh, like they're actually talking about, like Cdex pickups, but normally look for things like Rubik or anyone that can really mess around with a Spirit Breaker charge, you know, when the jump comes. What is the purpose of this Skyrath Mage? Is he here to stop the Latrac? Is that the purpose of EG right now? It's just a, a good solution to multiple. Thirty seconds to battle. Bring it. Bring it. Gets control of the lane. This is the only real counterplay that exists, unless you want to gank Clockwork behind his tier two tower at minute zero. Uh, not advisable. Don't try it at home. And. You just have to run in and, and remove this tree in this case. Of course, if Universe, he would have seen it, because he saw the Phantom Lancer taking damage from the tower, and as a result, he'll probably just be cogging his, his creeps as best as possible closer to his tier 2 tower while they're still slow. It's pretty easy to, uh, to get at least three of them into the cog, and he should still have an okay start. It's not... Yeah, especially if he does that one. <laughs> that's uh, that's well, extra good. You try and stop Universe, then Universe just stops the wave. But at least Aggressive is going to be able to still find his good farm. The creep wave has actually been well blocked up by Universe. If he blocks this up anymore, he's going to be farming up underneath his own tier 1 tower. And the Wyvern's going to be here too to slow the creep wave down. He's practically in range of his tier 1 tower. Safest clockwork ever. Uh, but we have to keep our eyes on the other lanes as well. So we have to look over towards the middle lane. Obviously, Samael versus Shiki. We want to see how this lane goes. There's actually top lane. Owie in real trouble. The Rocket Barrage from Fear. They're gonna push back XZ. Uh, but yeah, that middle lane, Samel versus Shiki. Samel's got the upper hand multiple times when they're faced up. A little bit of a double X. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> no Kale. All right, we're ready to go again. So yeah, this is a matchup I actually want to talk quite a bit about because the, the Samel versus Shiki matchup was the one that favored EG the most in the winner's bracket final that they still ended up getting 2 0 in, but Samel played a Radiant Shadow Fiend against Shiki's dire Templar Assassin in game one, and he crushed him in lane. Like, 
You know, Shadow Fiend can do well against TA if you if you are familiar with the matchup and play it well, but I don't think I've ever seen a Shadow Fiend at, at this level of play beat a TA out as hard as Sumail did in that game. And in this game, he's off to a really good start too. This is a matchup that's generally considered favorable for the Queen of Pain. He's 6-1 and one against 2-0 and oh right now, almost bullying uh, Shiki back to his tower, has to use the salve already. And it's not even the creep waves which are imbalanced at the moment, it's just Sumail getting the, the more last hits and... And you're right, Shiki, he's in a, in a rough position. The bottle has already arrived for Samael, so he's going to have that regeneration to keep the spam going against Shiki. And that might mean you're going to need some ro rotation, some support. Is this when you we look towards the mango carrying Mad Cow? It is the Spirit Breaker who can come and help out. And knowing CDC, they will be looking for some aggression early on, one way or the other. For now, Garter's just going to take the top bounty rune. He might just rotate in to try and zone Samael a little bit, but needs to be careful. PPD is already, as they know, Samael needs jungling. to get out yeah, of here. He He's slowed down the stun. It's not going to connect, but Samael still so low on life. It's going to be first blood going the way of Cdex. That's the start they want. That's the rotation they want, and that's the balance required for Cdex to get up the upper hand in EG's mid lane. I feel like Samael could have probably seen that coming and go back. He actually has a top ward at the... He has a ward at the top rune that would have seen the rune being taken at two minutes, and that's when he just needs to back out immediately as he sees Garter rotating, so... Might have just been paying a little bit too much attention to his one-on-one -on -one matchup and, uh, and a little bit too little on the minimap, and this is obviously really good for CDC getting Shiki on the map here. XZ he is, might be in trouble, he Frostbite. He's only going to get harassed out of this top lane. There's concussive shot as well with the orbs to just push him down even further. But you've still got a salve left on the Spirit Breaker as he tries to soak up as much XP from this top as possible. But this is one thing too which we have to keep our eyes on. The difference in farm between aggressive as well as fear. Right now it's 12-3 against 18-11. So many denies for aggressive. Universe, while he might be in, in range of this lane, it's not, a, it's not a wonderland for him to be here. He's not getting it a hell of a lot out of the lane. I say that when I look at almost level 4 clockwork on an off lane. He's done a pretty damn good job so far. Yeah, he's just outmatched when it comes to attack damage. Clockwork actually has pretty good base damage, but PL is one of the absolute highest in the game. He currently sits on 79 damage against Clockwork, 64. So even if they're fighting for the CS, Aggressive will have the upper hand. And as a result, he doesn't have to buy Quelling Blade. He's, he's not going for that, just working directly into a Magic Wand. And then we'll probably see his standard build into... Oh, well, let's see, yeah, he's just a yeah, doppelganger away. No real threat from that, but it's the middle lane where the threat is. The charge coming on Samael. He's not level 6 yet, the Lotrak stun will ensure Samael stays exactly where he is. The Lightning strikes twice on Samael. He really needed that level 6, but Cdek, the rotation timing is perfect. And EG, they don't really have an answer. There's no movement coming out from Aoi and PPD. They're spending all their time inside the EG jungle. Yeah, I would I would like to see EG get a little more active. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job in the top lane as far as securing here his farm, and they probably have a feeling that the overall farm game is going well. So Mail should, if you're this experienced and you play in a mid lane like this, and I'm saying this experienced, Mail is still a young player, right? But he's played a lot of top matches already. He should have a pretty good feeling that he's out farming his opponent. He'll just know. We're going again on mid. Third time lucky again for C deck. They're gonna charge into Samel. Still no level six under the tower. And there's just no support to come in. Shiki was low, but there's not enough damage for a revenge kill. And um, that's now 0 3 on Samel. But I look back to the old oh, clockwork. Oh. The Queen of Pain thought he was safe, but Universe with a level three rocket flare from the bot lane picks him off on the way back, and EG gets some, something back. Notice, by the way, how good a job CDC are doing with the rotation. So the first gank, I think, could have definitely been avoided by Samael because he had the ward. The second one is with the smoke, and the third one is with the wyvern coming from the other cliff. So he's like, okay, Lishrak is top now, they're not going for the gank. They just mix it up, they keep the aggression on that middle lane, and they realize, when they look over their draft, Storm is going to be the biggest problem. I think that they have good solutions for pretty much everything else. The Gyro um, matches up pretty well against PL, but we've seen in previous series that PL can definitely get the job done. They have the Winter's Curse against him too. Spirit Breaker is great. And even the Lashrak as a support, until Gyro gets BKB, can really cause him a lot of problems, slowing down his mobility. Man, c are burning so many smokes early on. They're coming again, and PPT. He's a man that has to keep the eyes out. Samal is trying to flash farm back up to the high levels and well, they're not going to find him, in fact they move up looking for the gyro underneath the tier 1 tower. Look for the TP supports, there's not one over on Storm Spirit, but there is one for the Crystal Maiden. I don't know if she can really stop this attack however, and see that in fact, 
They've only got another three seconds left of this smoke before it's going to wear off. And in fact, the smoke is going to break because Fear's sitting in the tree line. So, uh, no joy for it, but they're still going to charge in. And what can Fear really do? He can do a call down. Owie, the Sonic Wave doesn't kill him. Steal that boat from the Queen of Pain, but it's got to be mopped up by Fear. Looking for another one. No blink. Six seconds of Pikmin. He will hold him here. EG take two kills. And then Z, he's trapped in the tree line. He wants to charge out. Do they have a stun? Hookshot from Universe is up and running. And he latches him in the tree line. The seal is there. And X Z will die in the trees. It's three for nothing. The smoke gang took so long from Z-Deck, they're trying to force the issue. And it was shoved back down their throats by EG. EG just read that perfectly. They backed out at the right time. I'm surprised CDC actually chose to go for that next to the Tier 1 tower with a level 6 Jarrokov. The, the counterplay from Fury is very easy. And Universe got a fast level 6 because of that rocket kill he got earlier. So he's able to jump up to the top lane and help out as well. This is, this is the moment where you realize, like, okay, you shut down Samael. It goes back to the older, older stories. Samael gets killed time and time again. There was even one game, remember, he was 0 for 7, and then just one fight, and he goes straight back up again. That was when Fear was playing his Juggernaut. They just buy space for the rest of the cores, and it only takes a couple of fights in this game of Dota to turn your advantage around. And right now, even Samael, he's sitting at the third highest net worth on the field for being 0 for 3 on the board. He's, he's just the found space. Pain. Yeah, he's he actually he, he's actually out farming the Queen of Pain right now as far as it goes. But there is still the big factor, the aggressive factor. He is at level eight and sitting at the top net worth at 3.5k. And he is going to get involved. He always does. Uh, he's one of the most effectively rotating early game carries. I think in other situations you would have even seen him being a part of, a part of that top fight at, at minute six. But this time around, he decides to stay bottom. I think he's still waiting for an action rune. Like he, he picks up the bounty rune and then will farm up the jungle. But the action rune belongs to uh, Sumail. So he's flash farming up in the jungle and he's got himself a regeneration rune. And this Storm Spirit, actually really viable in the jungle with the high levels up in the static remnants as well as the four points overload. You can just go through camp so quickly. Cheeky's gonna have to find some farm. As well. Oh, it's oh, just gonna die. That's, That's the alternative. Ow, oh, we came at the Maybe right not. time with the blink. Shiki gets away to safety. Lots of one charges there. Surprisingly enough, Ow, oh, actually went for the third point up in the Arcane Bolt. Yep. So he doesn't have the higher level up in Ancient Seal, which is normally what you look for if you're looking for the control, the, the control factor from the silence. Yeah, if he would have maxed out Ancient Seal, that would have been a kill. But the question is what implications Universe would have had bottom on the lane. Top lane. He's trying to go after Winter Wyvern with the Hawkshot down the Battery Assault. Wyvern Arcty Burn will just run himself away. The battery assault, Universe looking for the proper procs, but he can't get it on the wire. And now they can turn this around. Splinter is still available, and aggressive's coming in too. The land, Universe just decides to TP out. There's no stun, so there's no kill. Good play under pressure here from Q. Just playing it nice and slow and getting out of trouble. Forcing Clockwork back to base is going to allow aggressive to maybe almost take this bottom tier one tower, or at least have someone else from EG run down there, if not Universe again, all the way back from base. This is, this for me just feels so rare, like after you, after the fight fails for C-Deck on the top, they're not pressuring EG to really react to anything. This is now the third time samael has gone into the jungle just to flash farm up, and even by doing this flash farm, he's brought Aoi up to level 6, so the Mystic Flare is now online as well. More issues for heroes like Spirit Breaker when they charge in or Queen of Pain to get burst damage down, when they also try and make that leap for a kill. There's a lot of problems with just starting to really rack up here for C-Deck. The one thing they obviously still have going for them is aggressive. And it's a very natural part of Phantom Lancer's uh, build-up to get Diffusal and or Manta Style, which both are really good against the Skyrath. So I think, as far as the PL is concerned, the only hero he's really worried about in this game is the Gyrocopter. And I, I do believe that's part of the reason that CDC really wanted to gank that top lane earlier and try to get some pressure out. Because not only could they have uh, denied the Gyrocopter some farm, but they could have also got aggressive at the bottom tier 1 tower if this fight had been a bit more successful. But as it is right now, EG have stacked up so much farm for some mail. Like he got the, mm -hmm. he got two or three jungle camps that were like double or triple stacks. So as a result, now he is actually second on net worth. He's overtaken the PL, who is behind the gyro of fear, since uh, he got the better fight in the top lane. 
And, and they're about to get more. Even. Universe is prepped on the hillside. He wants just to hook shot down the Spirit Breaker, allowing some mail to jump himself across the river. And there's your hook shot down. And the Cogs are going to push him back. Not the perfect initiation. Now they can try and turn it around, but the first misses. You do commit the Nether Strike, and Universe trying to get out with the Mystic Flare. The Sonic Wave will at least kill off the Clockwork. And EG needs to back out. Then again, c -Deck does. Somehow back in. A huge call down from Veer. They're going to take one. They're going to take two. A double for the Gyro. And now they can have pressure towards the tier one tower. Actually, maybe not that much. I'll have to back up. Ow, he's injured. The rest of the team want to go back to their timings. C deck again, and they just commit in the fights, which EG have the numbers. They have. They're ready to, to team fight up against Team C deck. Yeah, they were, they were missing the Wyvern, who was hanging in the bot lane, getting now level 7 on Q. Could have been a very big difference maker in that fight. But he stays in the bottom lane. He's more... He's most definitely going to be involved the next time. And the thing is, if you look at a fight like that, how it's structured, so they get a good call down from Fear, and then Samael jumps in. Those two heroes will naturally be very close to each other when they go for the same target. And that's where the Winter's Curse can really mess up your fight. But... Obviously wasn't available there, so EG get themselves a good win in that fight, and it's going to rocket fear way ahead of the PL now. He's at more than a thousand net worth in the lead now, because he of course got two kills, and one of them was on that PL. And that's such good news for, for the gyro. Any, anything which will push you to get that, that damage dealing item after you've got your initial items, your required items for the gyro, allowing him to deal even with the PL does get more farm and more more strength behind him. Samal coming in for a jump. He's got a regeneration rune going all the way down the Winter Wyvern. Doesn't want to take a hit, still got more of that regen rune. And they do get the pick off. The Wyvern will drop. And Shiki's trying to add as much pressure towards the middle lane as possible. Forced EG to come back. Same with the Spirit Breaker. That Creep Wave will reach the top tower. And who's the man that's going to be TPing in? It's Samal. Still with the back of that regeneration rune. It hasn't timed out yet, but he needs more support to TP forward. Either that or he feels he can go it alone. No, he's not alone. Fear waiting on the hillside. Now he's going to come down. Aggressive goes into the doppelganger. But the call down. Nice done. But they're in the middle of the call down. Not where see they want to be. They're going to take two again. This time it's over on Aoi. The support is important. And it's now 9-4 in favor of Evil Geniuses. The gold will start to take a dip in favor of EG with 3,000 going their way. Net worth as well. And this is now three fights in a row where C-Deck have come off worse for wear. Fear with a perfect read there. It was really... Like, you could tell exactly what he was thinking the moment he started running in. So they jump on the PL with the Storm. And instead of calling down on him, he walks down into the middle of the fight and casts the call down where he's anticipating the doppelganger will go into. And then he hits both the PL and the Lishrak who is coming in to back up. So he cuts out, he cuts off their escape path, giving them two kills there where... If he would have gone for the direct call down on the target, they would have got no one, I think, so... Mm -hmm. Really, really crucial play out of fear. Gets him two assists, and it brings Samael even... Like, he hasn't just come back. He's actually leading now. And the Skyrath of AUI gets two kills, which is also great. It's a, it's a very farm-dependent support, I would say, compared to a lot of others. It is very fragile, but can compensate for it with the right amount of gold, of course. Fierce getting back in front, though. He just felt like they've been prepping this ancient stack for a while, and Seedek are in no position to really contest it as well. So you're going to get a lot of money coming into the Jara. This will complete his Yasha. At this point, is it worthwhile going in for something like... Is it just the, the, the standard SMY build with the Helm and the, and the Aquila? I think so. When you're playing from ahead, it's such a good item build for, for a Gyrocopter. And he's definitely going to go BKB somewhere down the line, but I don't think he'll go Yasha into BKB in this case, since he has a really good supporting cast. Uh, the Clockwork can, of course, help him out a lot. If he gets focused really hard, it makes so much space for some mail. Oh, man. PPD. He's reading this perfectly. He threw down a sentry ward exactly the same time as the Radiant Observer Ward went down next to the Tier 2 tower in the mid lane. I, I kind of feel like EG have managed to find CDEX's number in this game. Like they understand where the move is going to come. They try and find the trade-off. And like the one time when CDEX then group up for a big smoke commitment into EG's jungle, there's no stacks, so you can't even steal that. Fear went down for the Radiant, uh, for, for the Dire Ancients at that point. And the rest of EG moved into the Radiant Jungle now. They still do claim the first tower of the game, and it's an important one. This is the access point tower into the Dire Jungle that CDC loves to play in, so... 
they're probably not going to be able to defend their own either. So as a result, they'll just look to to pressure the top tier two as much as possible here. They do have ward superiority in the area. It's already been secured quite well inside the dire jungle. Sure, PPD got the sentry down for the one closer to tier two mid, but they also have the one above the or next to rather the the tier two tower top on the cliff. Let's, let's have a look. I don't think they're going to try to give it away for free here. They want to fight for it. Well, if they can take the T1 tower first on Bob, then go up, then it's, then it's all going to be fine. Samal's going to be the man to TP up. Again, this is what now his third or fourth regeneration rune he's managed to find. And he'll look for the opening over on C deck. There goes your T1 tower going Good the way jump. of fear. It is going to be the SMY build from him. And there goes that observer, what I was talking about. The PPD will mop up with the help of the Satter. And c are waiting for him. The SP actually is going to charge in some mail. Ball lightning's away. And now it can be PPD with a frostbite trying to catch him out of position. The Orchid is up for some mail so early. Can guarantee a kill on the Spirit Breaker. And they might look for more here. That regeneration rune has been triggered by some mail in universe. The hook shot in. Catching out Garda. The call down will be there too. They cannot help the pony. You'll lose with the Wyvern as well. S3 for nothing. EG are rampaging through game number one of the TI5 grand final they are getting the maximum value out of this region storm. storm yeah <laughs> just for creeps this time i actually thought he was going down for the queen of pain and the region expires that's that's efficiency right there that was a questionable charge from the spirit breaker i think xz i don't know what he was expecting he wanted to just force the storm to jump away which he managed to but he should have seen the orchid and the region they have plenty of time when sumail was inside their reward to check him out and the counterplay from EG just way too quickly, uh, way too quick there with PPD coming down from below. For a team that's only taken one tier one tower, the amount of money that EG has got is unbelievable. Aoi's almost finished a full mech on a support Skywrath mage. I think he, doesn't he have it? He I, actually, it. yeah, you're right, he does. It's all on the courier. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's all back in his stash. Boom, there it is, TP's back, completes it up, so we get S and Y under 18 minutes. You get a full mech and arcane boots on a Skywrath mage. Even Clockwork has a blade mail, which is causing all sorts of troubles for C deck. Lashrak at this point will basically kill himself. Speaking of Lashrak, it's interesting to see he didn't level up his ultimate. It's something we generally see core Lashraks do, because they want to be more in the middle of the fight since they have more farm. But Garter being a support really wants to try to keep his distance. And it's a big part of the, the strength of the hero, really, the Pulse Nova, but. In this game, I think he's making the right call, not leveling it, mm -hmm. and just getting the point edict for in case they win a, uh, a team fight where he's playing from the back, they can start taking down towers with uh, with the edict. Is this the right call for the spirit breaker to go for something like a hand of Midas? Is this not going to delay C deck? I think at this point they have to play for a late game. They they know they're far behind in this game. It's a pretty unusual situation to see them in. We should remember though that the first game of the winner's bracket final between these two teams, EG actually had a really good lead in game one. And then all of a sudden CDC got a really good team fight and turned it around, so... Top lane, some mail gonna go on the Spirit Breaker. Still has the Orchid available, the Spirit Breaker. He's gonna pop from the Orchid damage, even with the TP back. Oh, Just one more attack from Samal would have ensured that. Maybe miscalculation there. Looked like he'd let him live. He, he did. A mercy there. He definitely had time oh, for Oh, middle lane. Attack. Yashi got the CM ulti going down to blink out from Shiki. He'll be able to survive. Universe initiated him with that hook shot. And now the try and fight on the towel, but aggressive. Sealed up the Mystic Flare, burning through the PL. One chance, can't keep him alive. Not when the cooldown connects. Sonic Wave will not do enough. Some else back to the fight, but not enough mana. But then again, we went to Wyvern. Locks in control. They find the pick up on him. Moving to the next target. Down to Garda. He is just getting golden rocketed down by EG. While Mercy might have been granted on the top lane, it was not in mid. And I want to point out something we forgot to mention, the, the stat that we just saw earlier. Samael got the fastest Orchid we've seen in the tournament after dying three times in lane. <laughs> they just stacked the jungle so much for him and they maximized his farming output really, really well. And now they get a tower as well. And you know, that's the problem, right? You can see the game plan for CDC was, okay, we want to gank the storm and slow him down so he can't do exactly what he's doing right now. Should have ganked him five times, I guess. I don't think that would have helped. What they had to do is contest the EG jungle. But it had to be something that was also flagging for C-Deck. Like Skywrath Mage did a little bit of chip damage early on. Maybe you're thinking, oh, the Crystal Maiden's just in the jungle farming up herself. But because they were just so efficient on their stacks, EG, 
maybe CDX just didn't see her coming. Right now, they will have to see this coming. The charge coming in from XZ. Up on top of the hill, he's going for PPD. Able to connect, but Universe has hook shot available. Actually canceling the Nether Strike. Now with a Frost Blast, and the ulti is up. Let it go! Shiki pulls himself in. PPD does not want to be here. In fact, they're hook shotting away to safety. I don't know if PPD will be able to survive this. He's trying to run himself away. The charge is starting up again. It will be the sacrificial Crystal Maiden. But that is the first kill CDX got in a while. Yeah, and not notice by the way how CDC are taking the fact that they're behind, right? They're, they're not, they're not starting to play defensively and like, oh, this this is not going well. We have to just farm up for a bit. They, they're really just looking for whatever fights they can with their charge and with their vision. A lot of other teams in this situation would just let EG get complete map control and dominate them, but they don't play like that. That's just how it is. Top lane, the TPs are coming in. That's the clockwork on the front lines. Universe turns on the blade now. Aggressive hurts himself so much and Sumail, well, he gets the Orchid over on Aggressive, but that's not the target he's really searching for. Keep your eyes over on Q. Watch for that curse as Tdeck could try and turn this one around if they really want him. But fear behind him. Concussive shot will slow down Aggressive. No doppelganger available, but EG, they're getting locked up in the creep wave as well as a couple of PL illusions. They do not find the counter initiation on Tdeck, but they do save their tier two tower. It's a little bit questionable buyback there from PPD. I think he bought back so late that he would have never caught up to the fight anyway. Maybe he was expecting Samael to be able to catch there as well as Universe, but neither of them got the initiate uh, they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Storm missed his ball lightning and then the fight is kind of over. When you use your entire mana pool and you don't get the, the jump with Storm, even if Hookshot comes in from Universe, they probably lose the fight because it's very important for them that Samael is able to deal the damage he, he can right now. Speaking of that, Samel might have some issues. Queen of Pain just pick, picked up an Orchid. So the Queen of Pain now finally has a Disable against the Storm. But I also wonder then, what is our next item for the Storm? And it's already answered. He's got a Bloodstone Recipe. So that's his next target. Lashrak, that's not a healthy place to be. Universe fighting with the jungle at the same time. TL may not let this go unpunished. Universe wants to run away, but it's not going to happen until Storm! Samel's in! He gets the Orchid on the PL! It looks like it is a kill for Universe, and now it's going to be a double kill for Samael! Three down in the jungle, and EG once again! They bring in the Calvary! Perfect turnaround. Universe is just too tanky. It takes a really going again. Mid jump this time. Orchid on Orchid. They will have that cursor to slow down Samael. Can he jump away? No, he'll pop. That is a huge kill for a Queen of Pain. At the same time, though, Fear is almost taking out this tier 2 tower by himself. Now he's sitting on the sidelines being a spectator, and there goes the tier 2. But the amount of money for the Queen of Pain, 780 gold just for that kill on the Storm Spirit. 571 was also shared with the Wyvern. And he's able to pick up the Glimmer Cape. That's a huge item for C-Deck. Yeah, this is the item against PPD, Mage. Run, pump those little legs and get out of there. He may not have enough life. There she, no he doesn't. He is so totally dead. As XZ will come in. No 17% doesn't require it. The Queen of Pain Orchid Pop does the work. Universe, however, well, he's got Hookshot available with fear here. He'll cancel the TP out. You might have killed the Crystal Maiden. The more was taken from me with the Spirit Breaker now on the sideline for 43 seconds. It's still advancing the game plan of CDC. Of course, this is not the early game they were looking for. They're 10,000 behind, and EG have done an exceptional job at utilizing their Clockwork and Stone Spirit combination, just finding all these pickoffs to thwart the, the usual playstyle of CDC. But with that said, the PL is getting toward his defusal, and we've seen so many games aggressive how scary he can get. Generally, we haven't seen him dying four times in the early game, though, so it is definitely a little bit of a different type of game. It really is. And, and but EG think... can't just play slow. Like, if they just rest a little bit, I think CDC are going to bring the fight to them when they have the defusal. If you look at the itemization, though, of EG, like, they're preparing themselves for this. You look over towards Aoi now, you've already done your work and picked up a mech for the team, but now he's going to buy a full drums as well for, for the team. Every item that EG have got, even the Bracer, which is over on the Crystal Maiden to go with the Urn, it brings up over a thousand life and allows her to stand during the fights. EG are prepared the c are going to try and fight them. And because the supports are also picking up these items, it's allowing the course to go for other things, like the early Blade Mail from Universe, the work into the into the Aghanim Scepter, and Fear, like he got a full BKB as well, 25 minutes in, to go with his SMY, or the Orchid from Storm, and then the Bloodstone follow-up. And with the death of Roshan, that's the full Bloodstone Done and the Aegis, the Immortal, to go the way of Smail. I think EG are prepared for CDEX attack. 
Oh yeah, they definitely are. They, there's no doubt that they're leading this game by a lot, but... It's, it's, it's only, it's only 12,000. It's, it's, 12, it's, yeah. 12, it's 12,000 net worth as well as experience. It's, it's a decent lead for EG. That's the furthest CDC have been behind at the main event, like quite a, by quite a bit. I think almost every game we've seen them play, they've been leading. And then they had that one game against EG in the winner's bracket final game one. I believe they were behind by like five, six, maybe 7,000 in that and managed to turn it around. Mm -hmm. this, this one could just be too much for even CDC to manage. It might be, but you never know until it's over. For now, CDX still keep their minds on the prize, and that is EG's base. If they can take a fight in Iraq's directly after, there's an aggressive Observer Ward, which is actually watching the movement just outside the Dire base. And then, as far as the rest of their vision goes, it's really not that terrific. They leave one defensive ward around the Tier 2 tower, but both wards are perfect. So if they are trying to push out the top lane, they'll see EG preparing a defense. And if they are looking to uh, defend their bottom, they'll see where EG are looking to attack from. For now, though, EG, they're preparing more of a presence in the mid lane. And that's where their Observer Ward is, watching aggressive moving around. And another one also on top lane, but they won't see the Invis Queen of Pain. The one around the mid lane has 20 seconds left, and I think this could be the reason why EG are just going for it right now. They have the Aegis on Storm, they still have the vision that they can use for a little bit longer. And Fear with the BKB as well, with 10 second duration remaining, can very easily lead the charge. There's a very, very limited number of options for CDC to take this fight, they're just gonna let it go. Well, so again, as always, they will be split pushing a bit with Aggressive, as much as he can. All this pressure is being put on by EG. He still needs more money. He's another 700 before this Diffusal Blade is completed, and by that time, he may not have any exterior towers. They need to do something about this sometime soon, or EG just keep out farming them across the map. There's still a steady gain going the way of Evil Geniuses. Even though aggressive, yes, he's finding more money. The rest of his team is kind of stalling up a little bit more. The Spirit Break is finding something, but he had to buy a Bracer as well as a Cloak just so he can survive for the next engagement. And Queen of Pain, actually a lot of money on Shiki. He's the highest net worth over on c at the moment, just about to crack the, the, uh, the 10k mark. And what does he do with his 2.8k? Do you look for aggression? Do you look for defense with BKB? Or what's the goal? It's a, it's a difficult question to answer because BKB definitely has oh, a way to say. Long jump up, found two. Sans is a spirit breaker, so we can kill off one. In comes Universe, cancelling the TB out. It's a two for. What Let's... a valuable ward I placed earlier. The moment anyone walks into Vision, Samel is ready with Universe. These two heroes together, it's like one of the best ganking duos you can get in the game. There are very few exceptions that are even better, like maybe some IO combinations can be just as fearsome, but the initiation range and the burst damage between these two, these two there's no time to react for CDC, they just get run over. But they need to find something, man, because right now EG are knocking on the C-deck door. And they really want to knock it down. The tier 3 tower stands between them and Samael jumping in. He's going off the wipe and the orc goes on Samael as well. They have to force off him away. And they've bought enough time for the jump out. Remember that Aegis the Immortal is still there. And it will remain there for another minute and a half. But they're going to back it up. There's far to be had on the top lane. And still, it's a minute and a half worth of reset time. And remember that tier 2 tower is still an objective for EG to take. While they continue to farm up everywhere outside CDEX base. They put another good ward in, in mid, by the way, about two minutes ago. So they, once again, see the rotations from CDC coming in. Just look at how much coverage EG have on the map right now. All these observers they've placed, one will now get counter warded by Q. And I was about to say, they're going to need a gem so that they can get a little bit of a grip back in the map. And he has got one on the Wyvern, looking to find whatever EG may have placed. And PPD buys his own. He'll start looking. I wonder if he's going to find this one observer ward. If he runs to the north right now, he is going to find it. It's going to ping out Q here. Now they know that he has the gem. This is the highest priority gank they can get. I think it's actually better to gank Q than the Phantom Lancer if they have the choice. Mm -hmm. If they take that gem away, they can control the map. And this lineup of EG just feasts on lack of intel for yeah. the enemy team. XC is so scared right now. The Clockwork Rocket hit him. He's waiting for Samel to jump in. Hilariously enough, though, Samel doesn't have the mana to make such a long jump. He had a DD room bottled up. But his Ted, Blood, Ted Bloodstone charges is just not enough to give him that huge amount of regeneration. But now with 4,000 gold sitting in, in Samael's bank account, he can buy whatever he wants again. I think we may see him go for a Shiva's Guard this game. Just 
even more burst when they're ahead like this and increasing his mana pool by a lot and his tankiness of course against the PL who will be dealing mainly physical damage but on the other hand you could say he's, he should just play the dodging game and try not to get caught at all and just itemize full aggression with perhaps even a, a hex as his next item. I think we'll have an answer soon enough. There is the BKB on Queen of Pain. It was either this or a hex for her and this is a pretty defensive approach that will probably guarantee she at least gets her spells off in the fight but it doesn't really put CDC in a position where they can pressure. I guess no item would have allowed them Universe. to do it. Smoke's gonna break. Does he go for a blind hook shot? It's too late. Both TPs have gone out from C deck. The rocket will reveal no one is left there. But they get map control again. Even if this doesn't uh, doesn't work out for them, they'll now take over the Radiant Jungle. No wards on PPD though. I think they've used all the wards they had when they had those four down a moment ago. But still, this is an area that cannot be farmed by CDC. Fear is slowly but steadily Mid just jump. becoming a monster. Too late. Shiki's able to blink himself away. Somehow really wanted really want to find that kill, and yep, you're 100% right. It's going to be the Shiva's Guard Storm. A real issue considering you're able to use your items while you're inside the ball lightning. So not only are you going to get the ball lightning damage, but you're also going to have the Shiva's effect go all over C deck. And they're already having a hard enough time trying to fight when they're underneath the cooldown. Let alone even trying to kill fear. Like this guy's got he's oh, he's already got his butterfly. He's got regeneration, he's got immunity, and the SMY. Is everything a good gyro needs? Yeah, this might be the game winning push. If EG take a good fight here, how many buybacks does CDC even have? They have none. Nothing up, nothing That's a problem. Problem. It isn't gonna come! The hook shot, they catch out the spirit breaker, the cold up to the perfect position! Fear turning on the flat cannon, so much build damage to Mal once more, and he's gonna find more! There goes your winter wyvern, your PL heavily injured, all they can do is just sit back and well and heal up while they lose! They lose their buildings on the bottom lane, the tier 3 tower is gone, the melee racks will join it, and what can C Deck even do to stop this? With no other tier 2 towers out in the map, EG can just move from one lane to another inside the base. And Samael doesn't want to even stop, he jumps forward. Looking for a reaction out of Tita, can't get one though. As the illusions will put EG back out of the base. Yeah, showing some respect to their opponents here, not forcing even further in. I think they might have been able to win the game there, but they're playing it safe. They want to get the BKB back on fear, they want to get full mana on Samael. Now, if they would have noticed that Queen of Pain used Sonic Wave in that fight, it might give them a little more confidence, but there's there's just no point in risking it in such a big match as this. They're, it's not like they're losing anything by just waiting another 30 seconds, and there's no, like, ages expiring. Mm -hmm. They have to have a feeling there's no big key items coming up for CDC anytime soon. In fact, EG can just wait for the next Aegis of the Immortal or use Roshan as bait. Because Tito have to contest this. If they actually go up against EG with Aegis as the Immortal, they, you can just give it a Storm Spirit. Samal will go win. He'll probably murder two, come back to life again, murder another two, and the game is done. That's the position C Deck is in right now, with actually over a 20k net worth advantage going the way of evil geniuses. It's the same on the experience as well. C Deck have had so much control in all of their games through like group stage as well as here in the main event. They've crushed EG before, and uh, well, LGD didn't stand much of a chance either, and now you just look at it, and EG, they are so far ahead of C Deck, and C Deck need to find something. They get the magical DD rune on bot lane. Dire of no vision, so they can take this, and they're actually waiting under the cover of smoke. It's a very tempting thing to actually go for this. They're gonna charge in some mail, being pushed back and awkward off. They're gonna turn around, but now Universe looks on in some mail. Almost dead, he is dead. Where's your buyback? Here she comes. The TP, the T1 towers. Two heroes down already. This could be it. The money will let EG win this fight. They kind of want it anyway with the amount of damage the fear has. Storm jumping all the way back up again. They find aggressive. Queen of Pain, the only one up. It fell at the last hope, and it was. EG will take game one in the TI5 grand final from what looked like an unstoppable CDE scene. They just got counterplayed really hard in this game. Usually their smoke ganks work out in the early game and they find the key kills they use to snowball the game, but in this case, EG read the map very well. They take a lot of initiative themselves with the storm as well as the clockwork. Very well executed game by them. Terrific Dota from Evil Geniuses. C-Deck will have a moment to think about what has just happened here. And a 